Thank you for uh, making time this afternoon. My name is uh, Supreet Cheshadri. I'm the general manager for uh, Amazon AppStream business. Uh, we're going to today talk about uh, how we can enable your graphics workstation strategy to be aligned with uh, Amazon AppStream. All right, so our customers uh, span across these industries, and the one common thing that they say that is most of the applications that they use are highly graphically intensive, which means uh, these applications have a very high requirement of GPU. Uh, they have a very high requirement on the CPU and the memory utilization. Uh, these applications are really rich, complex ecosystems that cannot work independently, and they really need these powerful workstations. Uh, but if you double click on one of these industries, uh, the customers in this industry, especially if you take design and engineering as an example, uh, it's not like the individuals in these companies are working independently. It's, it's a life cycle, it's filled with collaboration. And in this particular example, if you look at the design and engineering, it starts with a conceptual design, then it gets into a CAD, uh, tool chains are being used to design and create models. And then you simulate to, uh, against your stress conditions to see how the model behaves, and then you send it to manufacturing. Uh, companies uh, and individuals are now collaborating uh, on all these four life cycles, and in each one of these facets, the more and more companies can move to digital workloads, uh, it saves them uh, the cost on the manufacturing side. So this is a common trend we are seeing. Uh, but what this historically has been solved by buying expensive workstations. These are workstations that are typically cost anywhere between $4,000 to $8,000. Uh, and they require a high-end GPU, uh, really powerful CPU, and a large RAM. And that's kind of the typical characteristics of this. But what's happening is our business landscapes is changing. Business no longer are, are in one place. They are, uh, the workforce is evolving. They're spread across all over the globe. Uh, as I said, as I showed in the previous workflow lifecycle, they need to collaborate. They no longer can work on one place, which means the companies are faced with a daunting challenge of how do I uh, protect my apps and data in a secure manner so that I don't lose my intellectual property. Uh, so this is just the general trend, whether it's a 2D workload, whether it's a 3D workload, or it's a business app, or your financial app. This is a common problem businesses are facing. But this problem becomes much more aggravated in the world of 3D graphics apps because one, the workstations itself are very expensive, so you can't buy a workstation in all the parts of the world. Uh, and it just doesn't make a business sense. Second, a uh, lot of companies are st have adopted the cloud and cloud's becoming the norm. And as step one of this evolution, what they're doing is they're moving the data to the cloud. But the workstations are still locally available. And what's happening is the individuals are exchanging lots of data between their local workstation and the cloud. So there is a lot of data movement that's happening, especially if you are bringing in 2D models and 3D drawings. And this opens up a huge uh, security profile and a threat profile for customers where your core intellectual property is now exposed and it could be sitting on a local computer, it could be in transit, it, it could be shared through different mechanisms and you're kind of faced with how do I protect my data here? Uh, and then when you look at it, uh, the next set of challenges that the, these companies are facing is it's no longer that the app application and the data needs to be accessed through the workstation. Uh, it needs to be available on any device anywhere. Uh, this is, means this is the way that people will consume the data these days. And then what's happening along this evolution is uh, as people are, uh, as people and companies are geographically spread, they're trying to go after different market uh, condition, uh, market segments. And uh, in order to iterate fast and innovate fast, they really need to have this easy access to data collaboration and be able to exchange the content in a very seamless way. Uh, this is critically very important because that's how you get to market first, right? It's always easy to be first uh, than, uh, than trying to take a lot of time, right? But last but not the least is, as uh, companies are trying to iterate really fast, they're faced with this challenge is I've already spent this expensive workstation uh, and sometimes the software is not compatible with the older GPU and sometimes the GPU is no longer the latest generation that your customers or your end users actually want to use. So you're kind of faced with this, this, uh, this dichotomy of do I buy expensive hardware or do I buy non-expensive hardware and when do I upgrade when, and how do I upgrade? And I think you're kind of faced with these challenges. But, but at the end of the day, when you look at, uh, if you ask customers in all the industries, they say one thing, right? Their ultimate goal is to be able to deliver 3D apps um, 
to and make it available to their users on any device anywhere. But there are some core characteristics that the companies don't want to compromise on. One, security. Uh, they want to protect their data and applications. Two, performance. Uh, these are engineers who work on really high crisp uh, fidelity experience, and they don't want to make a compromise on that. Third, you want people to continue to collaborate in a very secure manner. So these, this is what the customers are really looking for. Until now, it was not um, uh, possible to run these type of workloads on any cloud ecosystem for a variety of challenges uh, that each one of the platforms had. In the next set of the sec uh, slides, what I'm going to talk through is how Amazon AppStream can actually help solve these things. And as I walk through this, I'm also going to dissect into what are the core building blocks that are required and why this is possible now. So Amazon AppStream, in a quick summary, is it's basically a fully managed application streaming service which allows you to deliver your applications running on AWS, co-located next to your data, um, optimized with, with the right set of compute and graphics profile, and you're actually delivering encrypted pixels to your end users. Uh, all you're sending is encrypted stream, so you're no longer shipping data to the end users, and this is a, a very secure mechanism in which but because our client that we support is an HTML5 browser, you can access this from any device anywhere, and it's the ubiquitous way of, of delivering uh, content. Uh, the big key thing is, you want to, in order to get the performance and security, you want the applications to be co-located next to uh, the data and attach it with the right compute profiles. So that's, that we give the flexibility, and that's what kind of helps us to kind of solve uh, the core challenge at hand. And I'll quickly run through the benefits. As I said, uh, the Amazon App Stream delivers Windows apps in a browser. You can access it uh, from any device anywhere. Uh, because they're all provisioned, the App, the App Stream instances are provisioned in your Amazon VPC. Uh, and uh, you can enforce your security groups, your custom security groups, your policies, your controls. Uh, you can actually completely control the application instance, the data, and any other resources that your application needs all in Amazon VPC uh, so that your apps and data are, are completely secure. And what we do uh, is, as we provision these resources, we want to make sure that we work with your IT. We don't want you to change anything just because you're starting to provision these instances in AWS. Uh, we want to work with your Active Directory. We want to work with your storage provider. Uh, we want to work with your network, uh, corporate network without having to make any networking changes. And then we also want to make sure that you, are, you don't need to manage anything. And typically, a lot of friction that we see is there's no hardware or software to manage, and that's kind of the easy way. And then we operate in multiple regions, so you can pick the nearest region that you want to use it and then can actually deliver the right experience. But the, as I said earlier, this was not possible uh, a, a couple of years ago to deliver these type of rich 3D workloads on, on the cloud platform because the building blocks were either there in partial or not completely there to make this happen. So in, from our perspective, we think there is four key building blocks that are essential to make this very simple for our customers. First, uh, the GPU instances. Uh, uh, second is the user experience. Uh, third one is the ability to co-locate the apps and data, and then the ease of management. Uh, so I'm going to drill down into each one of these uh, building blocks. Uh, GPU compute. Uh, we launched AppStream last year at reInvent here, uh, and since then our customers have told us uh, two things. One, we want a low-cost GPU instance that's easily affordable, and we want a spectrum of GPU instance that allows us to choose the right compute type of matching the application. Uh, so we have been working on this, and over the course of the last year, uh, we have made available three GPU family instances. Uh, these are all uh, built and designed for different application needs. Uh, on the graphics design, um, it's, it's a virtualized, it has virtualized GPU. Uh, it, it is running an AMD GPU set, and it is typically used for design and engineering uh, application. An example is SolidWorks. Uh, the second one uh, is the Graphics Pro. Uh, it has a full-fledged NVIDIA GPU, uh, and this is typically used for high-performance and high-memory-intensive applications that require both uh, CUDA kernels as well as uh, NVIDIA uh, APIs. And the Graphics Desktop is, is one of our existing GPU platforms that we have uh, that we are continuing to offer to uh, support for the desktop needs of uh, some of the low-end of application needs. 
So I'll dive deep a little bit into the, the two instance types that we believe are gonna be somewhat our workhorse uh, for our customers. The first one is the graphics design instance type. Uh, this is a virtualized GPU. This is the GPU that we are able to slice it effectively so that we can actually offer you at a very low cost. Uh, so now you actually have a GPU instance that starts at 25 cents an hour in US East region. Uh, it has a full-fledged GPU. It executes all the uh, GPU, all the 3D graphics frameworks applications that are listed there. So you don't actually have to worry about hey, which application framework is will it support? Will it be complete? So it just exposes a completely a, a GPU from your application perspective. Uh, and it, the most important thing is, even though it's a virtualized GPU, it gives you that high fidelity and performance that you would naturally expect in, a, uh, in an instance having a physical GPU. The second uh, instance family that I want to talk about is the Graphics Pro. So this is uh, backed by a EC2 G3 instance. Uh, it's running an NVIDIA uh, chipset, uh, Tesla M60 GPU. Uh, this we recommend for customers who really want high performance a GPU combined with high memory application. So the instance, the maximum instance memory that you can get is 488 gigs. And this typically is used for applications that run on uh, that, run, that is used in oil and gas, high performance computing, uh, seismic analysis, molecular sciences, where you really need this uh, high performance uh, app, uh, combination of memory and, and GPU. The second category is customers who really need CUDA based APIs. Um, and their application is built and engineered to use CUDA APIs. And that's the, the, uh, the graphics instance type that you want to go after it. Uh, in summary, as I said, we have about eight instance types that are available for you. Uh, it gives you the spectrum of uh, instances here and kind of gives you a view into uh, what is the range of G uh, GPU memory we avail uh, that's available, uh, this, the, the range of vCPUs and the memory range that allows you to pick and choose. Uh, so this is, we think this is the first barrier that we have kind of solved for customers where we give you this, the, the spectrum of GPU instance at a price point that matches your performance characteristics. So you can start with one. It does, if it doesn't choose, uh, perform as expected, you can always switch on the fly. So, so that flexibility is, is also there. So you're not tied to a specific instance. The second one, uh, when you think about 3D workloads, the, the most critical and the most important piece is the end user experience. Uh, you wouldn't want to compromise on your end user experience at all just because you're moving to uh, uh, the cloud and running it from the cloud. So, so the, if, a few key attributes that I want to kind of talk about the user experience is one, we have taken an app-centric view, uh, so that means we want your users to kind of just focus on apps and not necessarily on the whole desktop and uh, worry about what what's, comes with the desktop. So the user interface that we have is very simple. Uh, as I called out earlier, these applications run only in a browser, uh, so you don't need any other native clients or anything else. Uh, and you can have instant access to your desktop apps. Uh, so it's just like we want you to deliver your 3D workloads just as web apps. So just like you go to your favorite portal, uh, in a browser and you see the instant app experience, we want to provide you the same experience. Uh, the other one that is more important is these 3D workloads applications don't run independently. They typically uh, interact with other applications. So you can run as many applications as you want on a single EC2 instance, that's the AppStream instance. And we give you the right and simple user interface to switch between apps, interact between apps. A, a very common use case that we get asked is, can I run two apps because I start with a CAD CAM application. At the end of the day, I have to export data to Excel, modify something, uh, and then I want to import it back into the CAD CAM application to rerun my tests or, or change this. So, so you can do this. You can do uh, copy paste. You can use your macros. You can share data across these applications. And we don't come in the applications way. The other set of features that we also support is because just providing the applications to run in the context of a compute instance is not sufficient. We want to work with your IT, as I said. So we support a variety of identity uh, systems. Uh, we support Active Directory. We support uh, SAML Federation. We also provide you built-in identity. We provide you a, a few mechanisms to move your data. Uh, we provide you the upload and download mechanism. Uh, we also provide you a persistent file store that's backed by S3. Uh, if you choose to use domain join instances, you can also use your network file shares on any other data stores that you use in your VPC. Uh, we provide you also the ability to print. Uh, if you want to print uh, locally, uh, we convert your artifacts into a PDF file and give you a, a secure URL uh, that's valid for about two minutes that which you can uh, print. Or if you are domain join, you can actually use your network resources to print as, as you do it on an on-prem a on uh, network. 
The second uh, part of the, st uh, the user experience is actually defined by the streaming protocol that you use. Uh, AppStream uses NiceDCV as the streaming protocol. Uh, the, the very important characteristic of this protocol is you don't need to open any port. Uh, it works over 443V tunnel or traffic over HTTPS, so it really behaves and operates like a web uh, traffic. So you can continue to apply your web policies, web filters, traffic shaping rules, uh, and you, want, you can sniff the packets uh, depending on your, your, your audit uh, conditions. So it just literally works like a web traffic. So you can sit in the conference room today here and you can start streaming without having to open anything So and, that, yeah, and accessing your 3D applications. The other important thing is, as I mentioned, security is super essential uh, and we want these pixels to be uh, as secure as possible. So not only we route the traffic over HTTPS, we also encrypt the, the, every single packet end to end so that the whole packet is, is secure and only the authorized client can actually get, get the stream. And this uh, protocol is very much optimized for 3D workload. So uh, this is where we have uh, been uh, learning from the field in terms of what it takes to uh, operate a 3D application, what are the characteristics of 3D application, and we have fine-tuned our algorithms to really optimize for, uh, to provide that fluid experience. To support this fluid experience, we have a bunch of uh, features that are kind of comes into play and they all play together. The first one is the adaptive quality of service. So we constantly understand the network conditions that the end user is, is currently uh, undergoing. Uh, the, you, if you're connected to a Wi-Fi, you typically see your access points. Uh, the closer to you are, your network and signals are better. As you move away, it, it changes. Uh, these network characteristics are very dynamic. They're no longer static. So we kind of constantly are, every five seconds to 10 seconds, we are, we are understanding what is the signal strength of your traffic and your network. And then we adapt the, the encoding scheme uh, to meet this thing. If a lot of things on your screen are changing, uh, we try to use a H.264 encoding scheme. Uh, if things are not changing too much, we kind of use a different static encoding scheme. And then what we also do is we don't want to constantly keep refreshing the whole screen because that hogs the bandwidth. So we actually characterize the content that's being uh, about to be displayed on the screen and we look at the MIME type and then we basically go and, go and kind of optimize it. And then the last thing is it works with the HTML5 browser. The reason this is important is you, it works without any plugins. And to provide the consistent experience, what we do is we provide, we run one user on a one VM. A lot of uh, solutions that you see today, in order to uh, get you a low cost offering, they try to place multiple users and compromising the end user experience. But for a 3D workload, the most important thing is you don't want to compromise on the end user experience. So we kind of uh, try to innovate on the GPU side to reduce the cost, and we uh, run one user on a per virtual machine. The other thing is, since we are geographically uh, distributed and we have many regions, you can pick the nearest region and route your traffic to the closest region so you actually get the best experience for your end user. So the combination of these things is what allows you to kind of provide the, the right rich user experience that you typically would be uh, seeing. What I'm going to play next is actually uh, a video from one of our customers, Siemens. Uh, they actually recorded this video for us as part of our graphics launch. Uh, hopefully, In play. this short demonstration, I'm going to show you how easy it is to interact with a hosted Siemens NX installation through Amazon Web Services and streamed via the new Amazon AppStream 2.0. So here you see a session of Siemens flagship design software, NX, being hosted by Amazon Web Services and being accessed using Amazon AppStream 2.0. The main benefit of using Amazon AppStream 2 is the performance, very much like having the software installed locally. But because it's a hosted service, you don't have the IT administration costs of having the software loaded locally. The other advantage is, is as it's a hosted service, you only pay for what you use. So let's take a look at the hosted NX session in action. In the graphics window, you can see an assembly of a gas turbine engine. It comprises of the compressor side and the combustion side. So let's go through what could typically be a design review. We start by sectioning the model and then we take a look inside the gas turbine by using the cutaway section. 
And bear in mind, this is all being done through a hosted service using Amazon AppStream 2.0. It's very much like having the software installed locally. Notice how quickly we can dynamically edit the section. As part of the design review, it may not just be a case of interrogating the model. We might want to make some sort of design modification. Here we're going to take a look at making a design change to the outer ring of the combustion side. See how quickly we were able to change from the overall assembly to the single component. And we're going to use synchronous modeling with inside of NX to make some very quick design modifications dynamically. Here we've made a modification to the boss and now we're just going to make a change to the two fillet radii around the base of the boss. Finally, we're going to extend the flange of the outer casing. And again, we'll just use a synchronous move to do this. We select the face and then dynamically drag it to position. And there we have our design modifications are complete. So let's get back to our original assembly. I'm sure you'll agree that during this design review, there's been no noticeable degradation in performance, even though we've been working on a hosted version of NX and that's the power of AppStream 2. We could even work in full screen mode if so desired. Thank you for your time. So that was a good short uh, overview from one of our customers. Uh, so we talked about the two building blocks, the low GPUs, which were the barriers because of the cost and uh, the, the spectrum of options. Uh, second is the user experience. The next thing I want to talk about is uh, the apps and data, the significance of that. Uh, the, uh, the, the most common question that we get asked is, do I need to modify my app? And the way we have engineered this platform is you just bring your application as long as it runs on Windows Server 2012, you install it, you create an image, and then you import it. The big, uh, the caller that we want to make is you don't have to modify a single byte of code. It, if it runs on your desktop, it will run on the platform as well. So, so that's what, that's the, the the ease of use in terms of importing the app. So there is no uh, additional steps that are required, and you just prepare an image. Uh, the second one is uh, we talked about the data. Uh, so we offer uh, three different types. Uh, one is the persistent home folders that are backed by S3. Uh, so this is equivalent of if you are uh, on a corporate network and you use your corporate laptop when you log in, you get your home folder. It is typically backed by SIF shares. So that's equivalent of this is what we provide you. So this whole home folder goes with the user across the sessions, across instances, so they don't need to necessarily worry about losing the data. Or if you already have your existing infrastructure in your VPC, uh, you can actually use this. The reason why this is powerful is because we are actually placing your uh, graphical instances, running your graphics apps next to your data store, and uh, the latency is, is basically eliminated, and you can access your uh, data in a very fast manner. And then it's not always accessing the data from your data store, and a lot of times you actually have to exchange data between your local device and your remote device, and then you need to move data back and forth. So we provide you a very flexible mechanism to move this data uh, because sometimes you actually want to run the simulation on a GPU instance, extract the results, and visualize it somewhere else. So we kind of give you that flexibility as well. And then uh, the, the, when you think about the apps and data, they are not always in an isolated manner. They're always tied to a user entity. Uh, and so we, in order to make this easy, we actually support a, a, a variety of identity systems. Uh, if you're using Active Directory with Domain Join, we support that. Uh, if you are using a single sign-on with SAML 2.0, uh, we support that through Octa, Ping, Shibboleth, uh, ADFS, um, which are the kind of the most popular ones. And then for small and medium business customers who don't have this infrastructure or starting from scratch, we provide a built-in identity through um, backed by AWS Cognito. Uh, so that way the user pools will help you to kind of uh, start everything from the ground up on AppStream. So we believe in order to give you the rich user experience, uh, not only the interfaces have to be simple, not only you need to have a protocol, we believe that this whole circle has to come together. And 
then only I think you can match the experience that you typically see in a, on, a, on a physical workstation. So, so this is the third building block that we think uh, needs to be solved and we uh, made uh, good progress on that. The last one I want to talk about is we talked a lot about for the end user. Uh, obviously, end user is the critical because the, those are the people who are using it every day. But when you want to deploy these kind of solutions at scale, uh, the administration uh, challenges also is very critical. Uh, so in terms of uh, ease of management, uh, we upstream being a fully managed service. We take care of all the infrastructure management. We, we, we provision the infrastructure on behalf of you. We allow you to use the infrastructure on demand as and when you need it. Uh, and we work with your IT. That's a very big ask and very big challenge for uh, large enterprises is when they, as they try to move their workloads, they're not moving it you know, over, overnight. Uh, it's a gradual progression and we want to make sure that we support with your in IT infrastructure. Uh, and the third thing is as you move your workload, we want to make sure that it actually scales just like web apps. Uh, the whole premise of this is you move your uh, 3D workloads on AWS and then you start to use them as uh, web apps. So in a web app, things auto scale on the fly, depending on the traffic pattern, and we want to support that. So we offer auto scaling features. Uh, you can either have an instant on fleet, you can have an on demand fleet, or you can have a schedule around your fleet so that you can scale them based on your traffic projection. And then you want visibility into what's happening in the session, your fleet, your utilization, your cost management. So we emit metrics and uh, events you know, as CloudWatch events, so you can actually track them and, and, um, and use them as you see it appropriate. Finally, uh, AppStream was built uh, with an API-first mindset. Uh, we want this to be a developer platform. We want the ISVs to be able to consume them as APIs. We want our enterprise customers to consume them as APIs and be able to integrate within your uh, existing workflows. We don't want you to modify the workflow, and to enable that, we provide um, an SDK and a console. So I kind of walked through the core challenges that, uh, that we fa we typically see in a 3D workload on an on-prem ecosystem, and how what are the challenges the businesses were facing. We talked about the four building blocks. Uh, now I'd like to invite uh, we know the senior product manager on AppStream to actually show you some of these use cases in action because uh, the demo speaks better than a bunch of slides. So I'll hand it off to Vinod. Thanks, Supreet. All right. Hope you can see. All right. Yeah. This is my favorite. Oh. Let's do it. Does it work?
sûr. All right, so my name is Vinod Kumar Narsiman. I'm a senior product manager in the Amazon Apps Team 2 team. So I'm going to log in just like an end user would log in. And uh, usually this website is the Okta portal. So as an end user, just like Supreet explained, your user will go and he will provide a username and password. He will be provided with a list of applications that are made available to him by the admin. And once you click on, you single sign on directly into the Apps Team 2.0 instance. And, uh, and I already have a few applications open. Uh, this is a catalog of different 3D CAD CAM applications that are deployed on a Graphics Pro instance. Uh, and I'm going to run this demo with three distinct use cases. So let's start with the first use case of ArcGIS. ArcGIS is a powerful geospatial analysis application that is used by uh, professionals in various industries like geological research, weather research, remote sensing, oil and gas exploration for performing data analysis on top of maps. So as you see, uh, I'm actually interacting with this application just over a browser. I have the map of United States open, and I'm going to add a data overlay over So I'm opening one of the existing data sets. This data set is an overlay of all the car crashes that happened in Washington, DC. And, and you can see that I can interact with the application. You can select the data that I want. And now, if I want to switch to a different application, I can go to Application Switcher, and I also have another powerful application that's running on this instance, which is Adobe Premiere Pro. Adobe Premiere Pro is another use case where, uh, let's take an example of a professional digital artist working for a media and entertainment company using Adobe Premiere Pro, a popular application for making real-time edits to their uh, to videos, to their audios, for various activities like post-processing of movies, post-processing of documentaries, audio mixing, sound mixing, so on and so forth. So for this demo, what I'm going to do is I have loaded Adobe Premiere Pro with uh, a, an existing video, and I'm going to make some changes, edits to that video, and play back the process video. So as you see, the video is on the top right pane. I'm going to make some changes as we speak. Um, I'm editing the text, and I'm moving a little further along the video, and I'm going to apply different color that I want, and I want to increase, and I want to make it black and white, so I make that change, I go further along, and then, again, I apply a different setting that I want. Now, these are the few changes that I made. Of course, these are very simple changes. Uh, media artists and digital editors make powerful edits to their video using Adobe Premiere Pro. So let me play back this video that I just processed. As you see, all the edits that I made is immediately rendered. Uh, Adobe Premiere Pro is also an application which requires a uh, lot of compute cycles to apply these edits and then requires GPU to render these powerful changes that media editors are making to their application. So these are just few use cases of how end users can interact with some of these powerful applications, uh, just probably using a Chromebook uh, that are delivered to them via App Steam 2.0. So as an extension of this, I'm going to switch to a different view, which is an App Steam 2.0 image builder. I'm just logging into my console.
And AppStream 2.0 Image Builder is an admin desktop over the web experience provided to administrators who can install their apps, create an image, and deploy those apps to user, and tie those users with different identity options that are available, as Supreet explained. Uh, let's start with Google Earth, which is an application that you can use. And you can see the effect of the 3D rendering and the graphics that's easily accessible just over the browser. So you can see the fluidity of how the application interacts just over the network. And let me take another example of ANSYS Fluent. ANSYS Discovery Life is a new product from ANSYS. It's an application that's used by CAD CAM engineers to create not only create models, but also use data and build powerful visualizations and simulations and run them against their model and study the real-time dynamics of how their models of the 3D graphics model are performing. This is an application which also requires a pretty heavy GPU to create those 3D models. It requires pretty high compute cycles to, uh, to run the models and also pretty intense memory to load big data sets and run simulations and visualizations against them. Uh, and I'm going to take an example of a preloaded model that comes with ANSYS. And this is an example of a truck and uh, how various things like the tire pressure, the uh, air resistance, and the uh, road friction, all these different things impact the flow velocity of the truck. Uh, so as you can see, I'm a very uh, primitive CAD CAM modeler, so, but you can see the power of uh, interacting with these applications. And I'm going to make some simple changes. Just to show some possibilities of what you can do uh, and how effectively you can interact with some of these applications. Uh, and as I, I just want to reinforce uh, what Supreet said. Uh, it's not about interacting with single application. Most of the times, if you're accessing these applications that are locally installed, and if you're loading powerful data sets and run this sort of complex and intense simulation, your local laptop will become, uh, it'll hog a lot of your memory and it becomes unusable when you want to use another application. And in this case, uh, with AppStream, I'm able to uh, not just use one single application, either to run a visualization or a simulation, but multiple applications at the same point in time within the same interface. Um, and with the variety of instance types that we have, the flexibility that you have is, today, you can start with a graphics design instance, uh, which starts at 25 cents an hour, see how the performance of the application is, and then immediately stop the fleet and switch it to a different instance type uh, and compared to uh, your VDI deployments or your on-prem infrastructure where once you bought your infrastructure, you are stuck with it. And as, as new versions and new upgrades of the application come and if they require more demanding hardware or uh, hardware requirements or GPU requirements, you have to replenish your entire infrastructure cycle. So that's the benefit of AppStream and that's the uh, simplicity of how you can fully manage uh, without having to mani manage the infrastructure behind it and just focus on building the business value of the applications that you bring into AppStream 2. Uh, that's a brief demo. Now I'm going to hand it over to Marty Sullivan, who is from Cornell. Hey everybody, uh, I'm Marty Sullivan. I'm gonna get to my slide here. Uh, I am coming to you from Cornell University. Uh, I work for the cloud team at Cornell. I am a DevOps and cloud engineer uh, with that team. Uh, we work with all sorts of people on campus. Uh, so I really 
enjoyed looking into AppStream because I, I used to work in a science department and managed a computer lab, so I like the concept of moving that sort of workload to the cloud. Uh, I'm also an information science master's student at Cornell, so I, I have a, a similar perspective of the students who might use a technology like this. So um, just to give you a little background about Cornell, uh, we are an Ivy League institution uh, located in beautiful Ithaca, New York. I actually grew up in Ithaca, uh, Ithaca High School class of 2007, so it's uh, very near and dear to me. Uh, we have a lot of students, uh, over 21,000 uh, both undergrad and graduate students, uh, and a lot of faculty too, uh, just on our Ithaca campus. So. Uh, what I hope to get across today is more of a, you know, first of all, the perspective that the faculty and students have in using a product like this, but more importantly, I think, is the, how we would actually implement this at your organization and how we've done that so far and what our plans are for specifically the next semester uh, as we get into this. So first, I'm gonna show a video uh, that one of our faculty members put together. Uh, that demonstrates how the students are using this, uh, using AppStream, and they're using uh, ANSYS Fluent in their courses. So I'm gonna go ahead and play this video. Hello, I'm Rajesh Bhaskaran. I have a fun job teaching engineering simulations at Cornell University. I help prepare our students to use simulation apps that are very important in engineering analysis and design. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how Amazon AppStream 2.0 allows our students to use any computer to run graphics-intensive simulation applications like ANSYS Fluent in a web browser. And the particular simulation I'm going to show you is Airflow over a wind turbine rotor. My vision is the democratization of simulation, and AppStream enables that by putting simulation apps at students' fingertips. At Cornell, we have been piloting AppStream in select courses to enable students to access course software from any device at any time. For one of the courses, previously we have distributed course software on CDs through the Cornell Bookstore. Now, with AppStream, students are able to access the same software in a web browser, irrespective of the kind of personal device they have. As you can imagine, this is logistically much simpler it has also enabled us to bring uh, hands-on software instruction into discussion sections um, because students are able to access the software from, from any device. Most engineering design and simulation applications are PC-based, while many of our students have Macs. Um, and AppStream now enables students with Macs also to run these PC-based applications. Students don't, don't have to worry about getting a particular kind of laptop or messing with application configuration or finding a free computer lab. They just open up a web browser and get the same consistent experience as if the software was installed locally. AppStream makes things simpler for me. It's usually a problem finding a suitable computer lab during popular course times, and I have to tear my hair out to in, in doing that, and you can see the effect of that. That worry goes away with AppStream. Um, it also makes life easier for our IT department. Uh, AppStream is fully managed. It's secured within a web browser and has access to our existing network, so the IT folks don't have to worry about application distribution, you know, which version is installed in which computer lab, or about securing these applications. These are just some of the ways in which AppStream enables exciting new ways of teaching and learning while also making the technology environment simpler. Let me move on to give you a demonstration of the wind turbine blade simulation taken from our wind energy course. Here is a model wind turbine rotor that is designed and 3D printed by students in a wind energy course. This 3D printed model didn't come out quite right, so it's become my prop. Students test these models in the wind tunnel to predict what kind of power they can extract from the wind with this, this kind of design. Um, another group of students does a simulation to also predict what kind of power they can get from this design. Let me show you the simulation running in the app stream. 
So this is AppStream is running in a tab of the Chrome browser. And when students come in, they can pick between different applications. The particular application I've picked is ANSYS, which is an industry stand for these kinds of simulations. This shows you the the, the blade um, in, in ANSYS. So this is the same geometry that students test in the wind tunnel. And using some mathematical tricks, you just you simulate flow over a single blade rather than three. And um, and if I zoom out, I can see the um, there's a region around the blade, and you're simulating the flow between the blade and this outer region. And you have to divide this region into little chunks uh, for the solver to approximate the equations on those little chunks. That's called meshing. And this is an outer view of the mesh. And let's take a look at what you know what the mesh looks like as I cut through it. So if I cut through the mesh and I zoom in. Okay, I can see, you know, I have, um, I have much finer resolution near the blade. That's where most of the action is happening. So you need finer resolution. So you need to interrogate what's happening with the mesh near the blade. And then you can actually move the cut plane or the section plane. Um, and this is really important to interrogate what's happening with the mesh near the blade. And I, I can't tell when I do this. Um, that I'm running on a remote machine, and, and that's really uh, very impressive. And then you get the solver to solve the equations, and then you can look at the results, which is uh, the most exciting part. So this is single blade reflected twice to show you three blades, and we ignore the hub. Um, these are pretty challenging simulations, and so we try to make as many approximations as we as we can, you know, as uh, at least when we start off, and then we can bring in the hub at the next level of approximation. I can look at the pressure over the blade. Um, so let me take a look at that. Red is higher pressure. Um, so where the wind is coming and hitting the blade, you have higher pressure. And behind, uh, you have lower pressure, which is indicated by these blues and greens. Um, but really, one has to interrogate whether these values of pressure make sense. And that's the kind of engineering judgment we, we try to teach. And you can also look at what the flow is doing over the blade. Uh, let me show you that. Um, so I'll go to a single blade and then enable what are called uh, streamlines to see what the flow is doing over the blade. And the idea is that, uh, let me manipulate the view here, um, is that when you uh, release a fluid particle over here, it's going to follow this trajectory. And you see that there is, you know, a dead water region over here that leads to losses. And this blade needs to be redesigned to minimize that. So that's a quick demo of a cool simulation run in a web browser using uh, Amazon AppStream. So <clears throat> I think at this point you all can see the AppStream works, right? So I mean, it's a, it's a good product that does what it says it does. Um, and people are able to use it to really get their work done. But what about actually like delivering this as a service, especially to, in my experience, a campus? Um, so uh, first of all, I mean, we, we have a specific goal when we looked at AppStream, which was we want to enable students and faculty to bring their own device to a classroom and use their, their own computer rather than having to use a, a lab computer. Uh, we want single sign-on to be available for them so they don't have to have <clears throat> all sorts of logins for different services. We want uh, uniform application configurations because we have many groups on campus configuring different applications. So we want everyone to sort of be able to do it the same way. Uh, <clears throat> we want repeatable and secure deployments. So we want to be able to you know, have one application be configured a certain way and be able to deploy it anywhere securely. And the most important thing to me is automation. And that's the great thing about all of Amazon's services is they allow a lot of automation through API, SDK, however you want to do that. So a really important building block to this, and there's two, and I'll go over a different one next, uh, that's sort of separate from AppStream in this context is the actual package management you're doing. So 
uh, in order to achieve centralized package management, uh, as a DevOps engineer, I want everyone using source control. So I give them, you know, a training on how to use that. Uh, but import, most importantly, what we want under there is the actual configuration for the application. So things like how to install it silently without anyone attending the installation, uh, what needs to happen before and after uh, the install happens. So things that can be scripted essentially. And the actual metadata that describes that package and, and where to get the licensing information for it and things like that. Uh, we use a well-known packaging framework, Chaco. Uh, there's no reason you couldn't use like uh, Microsoft's Config Manager or anything like that, uh, whatever you're comfortable with. But something that's well-known is, is good here, it's something that people can understand how to use. Uh, you need an expert at this packaging framework um, and the, you know, building the metadata and GitHub to work with tech support providers on your, in your organization so that they can you know, help them to configure an application without them needing to be, you know, an expert in, in how to do this. Uh, so if you have one person who can work full time to do this, uh, that's where the time and skill is really required here in actually configuring the applications. And the tech support providers themselves who are familiar with the applications are the ones who understand it the best and they're the ones who are skilled in, in configuring those applications. So if you, if you combine a person who understands the framework with a person who understands the software, you get a great way to deliver applications. And it also enables collaboration among everyone in your organization. Uh, and this is just an example of like what that metadata might look like. Um, so this is just like a YAML format that has you know, information about you know, how the application's launched, um, and you know where, what silent arguments are needed to install it, and uh, you know other information about that application. Uh, so the other component is automated deployments, and this is where uh, really the Amazon stuff comes into play because this is where we can use their APIs and uh, SDKs to actually accomplish automation. So. Again, as a DevOps person, infrastructure as code is really important to me. So uh, we use CloudFormation to put things together, uh, most of our services at Cornell. So deploy things using CloudFormation creates you know, an ability to deploy it to any account, any region. Uh, so, uh, and using serverless components wherever we can is, is also a, a huge goal. Um, and abstraction of a lot of this is important too because everyone needs to be able to support this. I mean, you have to think about maintainability as you go along in putting together frameworks like this. Uh, so we use uh, Troposphere, a Python module, to actually do that abstraction of the cloud formation templates. And uh, hands-off deployments and fast production approvals are, are very important here too. Uh, we don't want our tech support people having to do tedious things and, and clicking and waiting and things like that. It should be a one request, they get what they want after waiting a period of time. Um, so from my own perspective, um, you know, I think that as an engineer in an organization that is moving to be a cloud first organization, um, you know, it's really important to you know, challenge the way things are done in an organization. Um, you know, leaving comfort zone is, is one of my favorite things to do because I think that's how things get accomplished. Um, so oftentimes, you know, you sit in meetings and you have to listen to like how, how people wanna do things. I end up going back to my desk and, and just implementing something, whether it's a proof of concept that never gets used or whether it's something that people really like and end up using. I think that that's really what an engineer's job is. Um, so I enjoy doing that for my organization. So I'm gonna give a quick demo here of sort of what our vision is for uh, the next semester, uh, because at this point we've sort of been doing uh, manual deployments of, of AppStream. Uh, and uh, so, I put together this quick uh, web interface. Um, you know, I'm a very functional programmer. I don't uh, 
we probably need a web designer if we, if we really want to uh, deliver this well. Of course, I think I did better than the maybe the reinvent event, you know event planner, but <laughs> we'll uh, I'll leave that to you you guys to decide. But um, uh, so we had touched a bit about upon the like image builder concept. Uh, so really, it's just a Windows instance that you you know can install your software on and then export the applications you want your users to have access to. Um, so these are just some examples of the applications we delivered this semester. Um, so this is the type of interface I'd like to give to tech support people. Uh, an interface where they can go and say, you know, I want, you know, Microsoft Office and SolidWorks in this uh, app stream environment, and then click create image, and then they have you know, an automated process go through and do that. So what I've put together here is an actual, uh, using Amazon step functions, um, it's a state machine that goes through and actually deploys the image builder uh, using the Amazon APIs. Um, and so it's creating right now a uh, federated session for that uh, image builder so that it can access resources on S3 and DynamoDB and other things like that. And also this, uh, the input for these uh, step functions or, or require temporary credentials. So basically this, you know, I put together a bootstrap process for the image builder that uh, prepares it to be able to install the software. Then it uh, uses that uh, framework to then go out and pull the you know actual binaries down, and uses that metadata I talked about before to actually install the uh, pieces of software the way they need to be installed. Um, so I think this is really cool. I mean, it, it, you know, and it, it it accomplishes that task, and 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 I'm hoping that it works well in the upcoming semester. Um, I plan to make this open source, so um, you know anybody who is interested in using this in their organizations or at least building off of it on their own can do so. Uh, you know, I believe a lot in sharing among you know other universities. We like to lead the way at Cornell, so um, you know uh, I can give you sort of an example here of uh, you know what a completed uh, task would look like here and the. The great thing about you know step functions is that it really gives you a lot of insight into you know how long your processes are taking, so you can really go in and, and optimize and, and figure out uh, what you need to change, what you need to update. And so the end goal here is the tech goes in, clicks what they want, what applications they want, and at the end they have a, a fleet to test with, an app stream fleet. Uh, they can go in and test the applications. Somebody approves that they're tested, and then that immediately gets deployed to production. So uh, we have a built-in continuous deployment here. So uh, that is my presentation. Looks like maybe we have time for one question or two questions, maybe. I think, uh, thank you, Marty. I think we have probably time for one question or two questions, as Marty said. We are literally one minute remaining, so. Yeah, if you want to ask on the mic so you can get recorded. Yeah, the mic, please, thank you. So we've been using AppStream 2.0 for one year since its announcement. It's been working great. In fact, we have replaced all the demos and use cases uh, with what we do. Um, we're using it for our fashion 2D and 3D uh, solution, working with your team actually for one year. Um, what we haven't been able to do is actually commercialize it. And the reason is, while the pricing is great, it really doesn't work for SaaS or subscription models. So that's one question. Um, so I'm not sure if you're doing anything uh, in that regards. Two is that since our solution is a 2D and a 3D solution, we want to use the GPU instances, but want to pay for it only when a uh, user GPU instance. Um, so if for eight hours a day and one hour, if eight hours in, in 2D, then you know, we're going to pay for uh, that, that kind of usage. What was your first question? Our first question was that, uh, do you have something in relation to the SaaS application? Because it works for the model applications, the pricing, but really is not profitable when you have subscription um, licensing. 
Yeah, I think we're exploring on the SaaS commercialization, what we can build. So any input you provide there will help us to commercialize yeah, them. Uh, good to um, have a chat. The second that. one, um, I think to address that particular scenario where you want to use uh, GPU on demand, uh, we uh, last year launched Elastic GPU. Um, that's probably uh, something that could help your particular scenario here. Okay. Uh, we currently don't uh, offer that support, uh, but that's something that we are thinking about it. So happy to kind of have okay. a chat with you on both of those. Good, thank you. I think we're just about time. So if you have any questions, we'll stand outside and help yeah, you. Yeah, we'll be around. <laughs> thank you.